Hi everybody, it's Miss Marie. And today for our last spring story time, we are going to be learning and reading all about the wondrous insect, the butterfly. We're gonna be reading A Butterfly is Patient and Butterfly, Butterfly. We're also gonna learn a new song, well actually a very old song, but maybe new to some of you called Over in the Meadow. And we're gonna be making a butterfly craft. Please remember that this is our last story time for the spring. And in two weeks, we're starting up our summer story time on June 29th at the same time. We'll have craft bags ready about a week in advance at the library for you to pick up. And we look forward to spending the summer reading to you all about animals in our Tales and Tales story time. All right, let's go upstairs and read some great books. Okay, so our, for our first story for Butterfly Story Time, I'm going to read to you a nonfiction book about butterflies, but it's so beautifully illustrated that it really is like a picture book. Um, it's called A Butterfly is Patient by Diana Hutz Aston and Sylvia Long. Um, you can see the beautiful end papers, a close up of a butterfly wing. Um, oh, and all the lovely caterpillars that make themselves into butterflies. I think that's beautiful and I think at the end you're gonna see them all turn into butterflies so that's pretty cool. This book is um, published by Chronicle Books and we have done another book by this pair. We did um, An Egg is Quiet back for our egg story time. Now we're going to do A Butterfly is Patient and as you can see there are big words that are the short part of the story and then there are a lot of more details here which I'll read sometimes and sometimes I won't. Okay, so a butterfly is patient. And that's what it says, a butterfly is patient. And there's a, an egg under a leaf, very close up so you can see it. A butterfly is creative. And you can see it is pretty creative. It changes itself from tiniest little egg to bigger and bigger caterpillars to pupa and then a, and a chrysalis and then it emerges as a butterfly. So it's pretty creative. It changes its complete shape in 38 days for some, I think probably even shorter for others. A butterfly is helpful. How do butterflies help? Does anybody know? A butterfly, like bees, helps to pollinate plants so that they can make seeds and reproduce and make more flowers. As the butterfly flowers, flies from flower to flower, sipping nectar, tiny grains of pollen cling to its body and then fall away into other flowers just like bees, so they are pollinators. So that's how a butterfly is helpful. A butterfly is protective. Do you see how it can change its form to look like a leaf, even though it's not a leaf, it's a butterfly right there. <clears throat> the wings can help butterflies camouflage or hide themselves. Just like in this case, it looks like a leaf. Pretty neat. Butterfly is poisonous? I don't know about that. Let's read and find out. The warning colors of some butterflies' wings, yellows, reds, oranges, and whites, and blacks, tell predators that they are poisonous or bad tasting. Monarchs and pipe vine swallowtails eat poisonous plants as caterpillars so that they become poisonous as adults. Birds and other insects have learned not to eat them. Oh, so it's not poisonous to people poisonous to birds that might want to eat them, so that way the birds won't eat them. That's pretty smart, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> a butterfly is spectacular, and there are no other words needed to tell you that other than the beautiful pictures of the different and the different names of the butterflies. They are spectacular, and they even have great names, like the ruddy dagger wing and the elbowed Piro and the common posy. I don't know, they have made the, what's this one called? The melee, leaf swing, all kinds of really neat names, but they're just spectacular to look at. That is all you need to know on that page. A butterfly is thirsty. To find butterfly, to find flowers, butterflies smell the air with their antenna. They taste, it, taste with their feet, but sip nectar, the sweet liquid produced by many flowers, with their proboscis proboscis, sorry, a tongue that coils and uncoils. So they're very thirsty. Some butterflies get their nourishment from rotting fruit or minerals, often 
a kaleidoscope of butterflies gathers as a puddle club in mud near a pond or at a lake to drink water rich in salts and minerals. So there they are, a bunch of different butterflies gathering to drink because they are thirsty. It's hard work being a butterfly. <clears throat> a butterfly is big and tiny. You see how big this one is? Look how little this one is. You see it up close? This is a rare Queen Alexandra's birdwing. It's the largest butterfly in the world and can have a wingspan of up to one foot. Oh my goodness. And the tiniest, smallest, and rarely seen Aryan small blue is found in Afghanistan with a wingspan of less than one third of an inch, about eight millimeters. That's the length of a grain of rice. Grain of rice, that's very small. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> A butterfly is scaly. What? I don't know about that. Is that true? Let's see. A rainbow of shiny powdery scales covers the wings of a butterfly. Scales stacked like shingles on a roof. Without scales, its wings would be as transparent as the wings of a bee or a dragonfly. The colors, patterns, and shapes of a butterfly's wings have a purpose. Some of their patterns of colors are to attract mates. In places where the climate is cool, dark scales absorb heat from the sun, warming the butterfly's flight muscles. Butterflies are cold-blooded and must have a body temperature of 86 degrees in order to fly. And so here we have a magnifying glass on this blue spot, and you can see it is indeed made up of scales, like a fish or a snake. But from far away, this is what it looks like. Cool. Butterflies, oh sorry, a butterfly is not a moth. <laughs> that is true. A, butterflies and moths belong to the same family of insects, which means that they are oh, the only insects with scaly wings, but they are different. There are differences between them. Moths appeared on earth between 100 and 190 million years ago. Butterflies before about 40 million years ago when flowering plants and the nectar that most butterflies need to survive evolved. Nearly every kind of butterfly flies during the day while most moths fly at night. A moth spins a cocoon made of silk while a butterfly wraps itself in a chrysalis or exoskeleton made from its own skin. Hmm, that's a lot of differences, right? And butterflies are newer on earth than moths because they needed flowers and they were drinking flowers and not come up to earth yet. A butterfly is a traveler, and that is true. Most butterflies, such as the red admiral or the common buckeye, migrate a short distance to find a warmer place. But some, like the monarch, travel far. Although monarchs only weigh as much as a few rose petals, they can fly almost 3,000 miles from Canada to their winter home in Mexico at a rate of 20 miles per hour. Glider pilots have spotted, have reported seeing monarchs flying at an altitude of 11,000 feet. That's higher than some clouds. Wow, <laughs> that is really high up. Um, and I guess they go that high up maybe to avoid predators or to um, ride the wings that are up there to give them a little boost to get down to Mexico where it's warmer. A butterfly is magical. I don't know that I really need to say much more than that. Um, this is a group of uh, monarch butterflies gathering together in the forests of central Mexico waiting for spring. They're, then they'll fly north again. Look at those beautiful, magical creatures. Really, really amazing. And this is, the, this is the title of the book. A butterfly is patient. The egg hatches, the caterpillar emerges, feasting on leaves before it wraps itself in its warm protective chrysalis, patiently waiting. This one is called a great purple hair streak. Um, and I think here it is wrapped up. And it's Christmas. What's it waiting for? It's waiting to soar. It needs to fly high in the sky. And that's why they are patient. They wait and they wait and then they take off. And here's that end papers I promised you with all the butterflies. Here we had all the 
the caterpillars that they start off as. Let's see, let's go back. And here we have all of the butterflies that they become. Truly beautiful, truly magical butterflies. I hope you really loved that book. I did. I truly loved that book. Um, and I wanted to read you a shorter book that's also really fun and special. We use this one in story time a lot. It's called A Book of Colors, Butterfly, Butterfly by Peter Horacek. And he's the author and the illustrator. Um, and this book is published by Candlewick Press. And on the end papers, you see all kinds of other insects that are, that are around too. So let's see what Butterfly, Butterfly is all about. One day, Lucy saw a beautiful butterfly. She played with it and chased it all around the garden. And now we see the butterfly flying around and Lucy chasing it. The next day, Lucy couldn't find the butterfly anywhere. Where did it go? Let's see it on the radio. But she did find a pink earthworm wriggling along in the ground. There it is. And a brown spider busy spinning her web. And this book is fun because it has these little cutouts and that gives you a hint of what's going to be on the next page. That's also really fun. I wonder what it will be. What will that brown spider turn into on the next page? Oh, over here is the queen, the green, um, Beetle. She discovered a green beetle, and here was that orange part of that spider. And a family of very spotty red ladybugs scurrying around. And this ladybug has a cutout. What's that going to be? Oh, it's Lucy's dress. You see that? She saw a snail with an orange shell slithering. Oh, look, and the cutout became a snail shell also. And there are some holes in Lucy's dress. I don't know if you can see them. Let me poke my finger through. Can you see that? <laughs> One, two, three holes in her dress that are going to become something on the next page. Three purple caterpillars munching on a leaf. Oh my goodness, became the faces of the caterpillars. That's the dress holes right there. A shimmering blue dragonfly. Oh, those are great, interesting characters here. And then another cutout, let's see. That becomes the body of a bee. Oh, and there's a stripe on the bee. And a yellow bee with a stripe buzzing about. <laughs> but Lucy didn't see the butterfly anywhere. She looked and looked. Lucy lay down in the cool grass to wait. Then high in the sky... I'm going to put it down to surprise you. High in the sky, what? Oh, there was a colorful, beautiful butterfly. And here we see Lucy, and she sees the butterfly. And if I, when I open the page, it really pops out. And you can see it from all different angles, flying up in the sky. And sometimes I like to make it flutter like this, because it looks like a butterfly fluttering. It's just really beautiful. I love this book. <laughs> this is one of my favorites for story time. And then we have some more of those creatures she saw. Do you remember what they were? A worm, a bee, a ladybug, a snail, a spider, a dragonfly, a beetle, and there's the butterfly. And that's just a really beautiful, short, simple story that I love. <clears throat> we do in story time a lot. Another thing that I love, this song doesn't actually have any butterflies in it but because it's called over in the meadow it reminds me of places where you would see butterflies you see them where there's lots of flowers and grasses and um, a meadow is a perfect place to go and spot butterflies um, around here there are definitely meadows that you will see lots of sort of wild flowers and grasses growing and that's where the butterflies like to go you could also go to the botanical garden in new york and um, in the bronx and see a huge meadow uh, that has all kinds of plants that are native to the United States. That means that they come from this country. 
been up brought in from other countries and they have tons of butterflies in them. They flutter around and I've even seen hummingbirds there. So Over in the Meadow is an old fashioned song I really like and I'm gonna sing it for you and hold up the characters so you can see them. You ready? And here we have a little mother toad and her little toady and there's only one little toady. You ready? Over in the meadow, in the sand and the sun, lived an old mother toady and her little toady one. Wink, said the mother, I wink, said the one. So they winked and they blinked in the sand and the sun. This is a fun song and it's a counting song too. <clears throat> so now we have a shiny mother fish and her little fishies, one, two. Ready? Over in the meadow where the stream runs blue lived an old mother fish and her little fishies too. Swim, said the mother, we swim, said the two. So they swam and they leaped where the stream runs blue. Let's see who's next. We gotta go up to three, right? Three. And there's three little squirrels and their mother. One, two, three. Ready? Over in the meadow, in a hole in the tree, lived a busy mother squirrel and her little squirrelies three. Gather, said the mother, we gather, said the three. So they gathered and were glad in a hole in the tree. Right, because that's what the squirrels do, they gather. Let's see who's next. Oh boy. I haven't seen many of these around, but they are around. Muskrats. And there are, there's a mother of mother, Mother of Muskrat and her little raddies, four. One, two, three, four. Over in the meadow, in the reeds on the shore, lived a kind mother muskrat and her little muskrats, four. Dive, said the mother, we dive, said the four. So they dived and they burrowed in the reeds on the shore. Oh, who's coming up next? Oh, this is a fun one. This is an animal that lives in a place that rhymes with five. Can you think of a place where animals live that rhymes with five? How about a hive? We've got a busy, a busy father, must a uh, busy father honeybee. Ready? Over in the meadow, in a snug beehive, lived a father honeybee and his little bees five. Buzz, said the father, we buzz, said the five. So they buzzed and they hummed in the snug beehive. I like that one. Now, what kind of a home is made out of something that rhymes with the number six? A home made of sticks. And what is this? What is this animal? Let's see. This looks like a proud papa crow. And his little crows, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ready? Over in the meadow, in a nest made of sticks, lived a proud papa crow and his little crow six. Caw, said the papa, we caw, said the six. So they cawed and they called in a nest made of sticks. Look at that. So the next one we have is seven. How many bunny baby bunnies do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, you ready? Over in the meadow, in the grass, soft and even, lived a bouncy father rabbit and his little rabbit seven. Hop, said the father, we hop, said the seven. So they hopped and they danced in the grass, soft and even. I'm there. Look at that, they are dancing and hopping. I love that one. <laughs> oh, this is a fun one. Gate rhymes with eight. And we have got a brown mama lizard. You ready? Over in the meadow by the old mossy gate lived a brown mama lizard and her little lizards ate. Bask, said the mama, we bask, said the eight. So they basked in the sun on the old mossy gate. There they are, catching some sun rays. <laughs> now who do we have? Let's see. Oh, this is a nice one. We're up to number nine. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine little frogs. Over in the meadow where the quiet pools shine lived a green papa frog and his little froggies nine. Croak, said the papa, we croak, said the nine. So they croaked and they splashed where the quiet pools shine. 
And they're there cooking and splashing, and maybe even catching some flies. <laughs> you can see that. That's fun right there. Oh, and now we're up to number 10, our last one. Are you ready? And there's a log that has been made into a den for a mother spider and her little spider's den. Over in the meadow in the sly little den lived a black mother spider and her little spider's ten. Spin, said the mother, we spin, said the ten. So they spun lacy webs in their sly little den. And there they are. Sly means like sneaky. You can't really find them. It would be hard to find them, but there they are. And that is the end of Over in the Meadow. It's one of my favorites. And just the idea of doing butterflies today made me think of that one. So I thought we would do it together. All right, that's it for this week. This is our last story time of this session. Our next session starts in just a few weeks and it's going to be all animal stories. It's going to be tales and tales in different locations. Where do we see animals? What kinds of areas and locations do animals live in? We're going to read all about it and find out all about it. If you have a craft bag from the library, please stick around and we're going to be doing a craft at the end. Otherwise, I'll see you in a couple weeks. Have a great rest of the spring. Bye. Okay, so if you picked up your craft bag, you should have a page, a paper like this with a butterfly on it and two different straws. One is a big, wide sort of milkshake straw that's been cut down um, and has some cuts in it, I believe. And the other one is a milk, a milk straw and one is a regular straw like this. And I have cut the top, cut it in the top there. All right, so first thing is, and what you're gonna need from home is some markers or crayons, some tape and some scissors. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is color our butterfly. All the colors, whatever color you like. You can call it whatever you like. Okay, whenever you're finished coloring it out, you can cut it out or have your grown-up help you cut it out. It doesn't have to be perfectly on the lines, just the, just the, the rough shape of the butterfly um, will be good enough. And this part, and this part you're definitely going to need help with. You're going to fold it in half, pretty close in half like that. And then you're going to cut a tiny little slit in the middle of the butterfly's body. Not too big. Just big enough for this straw to pass, to pass through. Um, yes, this way. Okay, and then there's slits cut into the straw. And those we're going to tape down onto the two wings of the butterfly. Okay, so let's grab some tape. So it basically looks kind of like a V on the butterfly. And then you're gonna take the smaller but wider straw. I didn't give you, if your smaller, shorter straw isn't cut, ask your grown-up to just cut two slits into that as well, like that. Some cut, some I, I thought I cut them, but maybe I didn't. So if I didn't, just cut two, two slits and push this down through there. And when you push up, it's going to make the butterfly's wings flat. And if it doesn't work, you can cut it a little lower. Cut the, cut the slits a little bit lower. Like that. Oops. You can bend those down a little bit. There we go. So it's kind of like that underneath. And when you push up and down, it makes the butterfly's wings flap. And there is your own flapping butterfly. You can always cut the color of the bottom part too if you like. I didn't want to do that today. Just 
want to color my top part. And there we go. Flapping those out the back side. And if they don't work exactly, then play with them a little bit until they, till they do. There we go. All right, enjoy, and I will see you soon.